I'm Amy Davidson Sorkin. I write about politics for The New Yorker. And today I'm going to be talking about whether Donald Trump has been disqualified from running for president of the United States. What the case is going to come down to is how the Supreme Court interprets Section 3 of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Pretty much every phrase in it is being debated. So let's just break that down. When I say every phrase, that includes the phrase, an oath to support the Constitution. Simply put, if you took an oath to support the Constitution of the United States for one of these official positions that they list, you are in the target of Section 3. Believe it or not, one of the arguments that Donald Trump's lawyers are making is that the presidential oath, you know, which he takes on Inauguration Day with the Bible, with, his, with Melania, with everybody, doesn't qualify as an oath to support the Constitution because it doesn't include the word the exact word support is an oath to preserve, protect, protect and, defend. and defend the Constitution. Does that matter? That gives you an idea of the level of scrutiny Section 3 is getting and the debate that's going on about it. What is an insurrection? The biggest broad question for the Supreme Court is who decides? But one important thing here is that whatever the Supreme Court decides, it's not only going to apply to Donald Trump. For example, some of um, the amicus briefs, they're basically like, well, if you want to disqualify Trump on these grounds, how about disqualifying Kamala Harris? Because she said supportive things about Black Lives Matter when they were rioting. The Lieutenant Governor of Texas said, well, if you're going to go down that Path. Let's talk about disqualifying Joe Biden because he hasn't kept the border secure. So that's why it's so important to get these terms right and to be clear about what we're talking about. The Colorado Supreme Court said, we're not going to define an insurrection, but any, any definition that we would accept would include January 6th. And what was really important to them about January 6th is that January 6th wasn't just some random riot. It was trying to stop the peaceful transfer of power. It was trying to undo an election. So you could call a lot of things a rebellion or an insurrection, but isn't that sort of the essence of it to try to, to change who's president? So that, that's their argument that, that we don't know what it is, but it's this. Does Section 3 apply to Trump in particular? Donald Trump's lawyers say no. They say that it, the presidency is not covered by Section 3. In plain language, their argument seems strange. It's not as strange as it sounds. Um, there is a sense in which, in the early days of the Constitution, officer of the United States was used to mean somebody who was appointed and not somebody who was elected. And there's language where in the Constitution where it says, for example, that the president appoints the officers. Well, it doesn't say other officers. So there's some language games you could play. But the counter argument is that just look at the plain language. Look at the intent of these people. They were trying to keep the government from being taken over, why would they leave the presidency out? One other very interesting argument that Trump's lawyers are making, look again at the text of Section 3. It doesn't say anything about running for office. It just says you can't hold the office. Why are you saying that I can't run for president? There's nothing about that in there an argument they're making and saying, I should be on the ballot. I can be elected president. Let's count all the results. Let's have all the CNN, you know, the guys stand in front of the maps with all the electoral votes coming in. And then we'll talk about whether I'm, I've been disqualified. The logic of this is that Congress could always undisqualify him by the time he's supposed to be inaugurated. 
But then there's another voice out there, I think, that's saying, let's think carefully about what we're doing, the rules that we're writing, and how it's going to affect people who are not Trump. You know, maybe this discussion has been a little bit too Trump-centric, and maybe it needs to be a little more democracy-centric. Democracy is also the right to dissent. It's, you know, making sure that the First Amendment isn't somehow squelched by Section 3. It's making sure that a really broad array of people can take part in public life, can, like, in their town, be be part of the town government, be, you know, in their state, be a state legislator. So it, it's more than Trump because the Constitution is a lot more than Trump. The implications of this case are, are huge. Just think about it, about it this way. Colorado might have its own way of figuring out whether Trump is on the ballot or not. Maybe Mississippi has another one. Maybe a lot of states have different standards. What if Trump is on the ballot in some states and not in other states? These things have never really been worked out. What if you get to the to the electoral college, you know, and people say, no, those those electoral votes, we're not even going to look at them because our state disqualified him. It gets very, 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 very complicated very quickly.